you and take over in that environment for me. That's what Jesus is looking for. Of the increase of his government and prosperity. And he said, There shall be no end. There, in that place, we read in Isaiah. He said, The increase of his government. So, the more the government increases, the more peace increases. And the word used for peace there is a Hebrew word called shalom, which means prosperity. That's why this, my own version, translates it as prosperity. He said, The increase of his government and prosperity. There shall be no end. The more you seek the government of God, the more you prosper. The more you want to help God and spread his government, the more you prosper, the more you have peace. That's why the Bible says the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but about righteousness and peace and joy. So when you are in the kingdom and that's the priority, he said, peace will envelop you and cover you like a shield. When God's priority becomes your priority, Joy will be flowing like a river when everybody else doesn't know what is happening. There will be joy coming from within. But today, most of you are depressed. Most of you are stressed. Most of you are afflicted. Most of you are worried. Most of you are full of anxiety. The reason is because you have never made God's priority your priority. Let me tell you, when God's priority becomes your priority, no devil anywhere can stand before you. Never. Behold, I give unto you power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil. Nothing shall my enemies hurt you. The reason you have been hurt is because you don't have the power of dominion. You don't have the kingdom. And if you have it, you are just ignorant. You just want to use it for yourself and yourself alone. On the increase of his government, the Bible said in the book of Psalm 103, verse 19. You say you have established your throne in heaven and your kingdom rules over all. He said, What that is in heaven, but he wants to rule from there. But he wants to rule through you and I. God wants you to be his eyes in your office, he wants you to be his ears in your company, he wants you to be his mouth in that business, he wants you to be his hands in that community. That's what he's looking for. The Bible said in the book of Psalm, in the, in the book of Isaiah 59, he said, The hand of the Lord is not short to deliver you. When you go and look for the meaning of the word hand, it means God is not powerless. When God is talk, hand is talking about, he's talking about power. So God is not powerless. And you are the power of God. You are his power, you are his hands. You are everything to him, for him. God cannot do anything. Until you respond to him. Amen. God cannot be able to move. Until you agree with him. Most of us. We don't care. Even as I'm talking now. Most of you. He enters here. He goes out from this side. We don't even go and sit down and think about what God is saying to us. Tomorrow you come in again. Your problem is still there. Yet you can't even hear what God is saying. Go and concentrate on my business. And I will concentrate on your business. Seek you first the kingdom of God. And, his, and all your needs will be given to you as a bonus. You don't care. All you want every day and out. Give me, give me, give me. God is telling you what to do to get it. You don't care. Uh -uh. He has established his throne in heaven. His kingdom rules. Over all. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God wants us to expand his kingdom. Expand his rule all over the earth. Those of you that want, if you want to get more understanding, then we must go for a training. Kemi and her group and uh, Nevesh and his wife they are coming for that training so that this thing now will be explained more clearer and they are already moving. They are already moving. They are already taking place. They are now already expanding. They have now understood. They have now understood what we are talking now. Are you getting what I'm saying to you? Don't you know your head. Are you getting what I'm saying to you, child of God? In your school, people must know that there is God because of you. 
When a demon begins to manifest in somebody, you go out and cast at the devil because you are his eyes in that school. As a child of God, you should not be vulnerable at any time because you carry the government of God in you. Jesus came. The first message he preached was repent for the kingdom has arrived. When he said the kingdom is near, what does it really mean? The kingdom is near. When I say, sister, uh, I'm going to use Jethro is near. What does that mean? It's just a sister. Jethro is somewhere in the crowd. It's somewhere in the crowd. It's around. So when he said the kingdom is near, it's around. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying to you? He's there. He's around. That was his first message. After that message, what did he do? The Bible told, about, told us about what place he did. When he wanted them to pray, what did he ask them to pray? Pray for the kingdom. When he sent them to go and preach, what did he tell them to preach? Preach the kingdom. When he resurrected from the dead, what did he talk about in the book of Acts 1, verse 3? He was talking about the kingdom. To show you how important it is to him. Let's look at the Bible. Let's look at Luke 17, 20 to 21. Luke 17, 20 to 21. We don't have any excuse. We are going to be judged if we fail to do what God is asking us to do for. Jesus has invested in all of us heavy investment. And we are wasting God's investment in us. Because either we don't care or we don't know or what? The investment is heavy. Luke 17 verse 20 to 21 the Bible says being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God will come he answered them the kingdom is not coming with some observable something observable no one will say see here or see there for you see the kingdom of God is in you the kingdom of God is where? In you. It is not, no, 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 when you go to Nigeria, you, eh, eh, those people have been deceived. I'm not, no, if I can go to Nigeria, I will be delivered. You, you went to Nigeria, did you deliver? No, the problem became worse. No, no, if I only can go to Jerusalem and baptize in Jordan River. <laughs> you baptize in Jordan River. When you came back, isn't your color change? God is not in Jerusalem. God is not in Nigeria. God is not in Zululand. God is in you. He's inside of you. For the kingdom of God is in you. So what do I do with the kingdom of God? The kingdom means government. That government is in you. What do I do with the government that is in me? God says, spread it for me. So whatever you enter, rule there. Look at what it says. Just look at Psalm 110. Look at Psalm 110. The kingdom that is in you. Look at what is demanding from you. Look at what is asking you oh, to do with it. Psalm 110 from verse 1 to 3. 110. Are you there? This is the declaration of the Lord. To my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your foot too. The Lord will extend his mighty power from Zion, saying, Rule in the midst of your enemies. Look at me. He will extend his rule, his dominion, his kingdom from where? Can somebody read another version for me? Another version, different version, please. Yes, please. The Lord Father says to my Lord, in the Take the story, microphone, please. The Lord Father says to my Lord, the Messiah, his son, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet, subjugating them into complete submission. The Lord will send his set the center of your strength from Zion. Saying, rule in the midst of your enemies. Three. 
Your people will offer, will offer themselves willingly to participate in your battle in the day of your power. Amen. The day the kingdom comes, say, people will offer themselves. People will willingly say, I want to go and fight for the king. In the day of his power, we are now in the day of his power. The power arrived, the kingdom arrived on the day of Pentecost. He said, in the day of your power, people will say, hey, when they understand the message, they will offer themselves willingly. The reason you are not doing anything is because you have not understood what we are talking about. The day you understand it, you will run. The Bible said from in the book of Luke 16 verse 16, he said, the Lord and the prophet were until John. He said from that time, the kingdom has been preached and everybody is forcing themselves into it. When you understand the message, you will say, Lord, I am here. Use me. Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your foes. He said, Your power, your royal power, your dominion will be set out from Zion. What is Zion? What is Zion? Who is the church? So, where will the power go from? Me. I carry the power. I am the instrument God wants to use to spread this government. I am the instrument. I want to use the rule. He said, it's going to come out from Zion. The word said by them means authority. It's a royal, it's a, a symbol of authority. That's why you see, how many of you have seen kings before? Especially traditional kings. Zulu kings and Nigerian kings. What do you see them carry in their hand? There is something they carry in their hand. What do you think that thing is? That thing is the symbol of their authority. That's what he calls said by them. So the symbol of God's authority is you. The symbol of God's authority is you. When the devil sees you, they should start shaking. Because we are the symbol of his power. Oh, I don't know if I'm talking to somebody or somebody. You are the symbol of his power. He said that power will extend from Zion. And it's a commandment. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment. Rule in the midst of your enemies. It's a commandment. So when you are not ruling, you are sinning. You are not obeying commandment. You are not serving God. I've said it how many times. Many people think they are serving God in the church. You are not serving God anywhere until the day you start ruling. Let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let them have what? The first commandment God gave to man was have dominion. Rule. Control. First commandment. If you are not dominating, if sickness is still dominating you, you are in trouble. If poverty is still dominating you, <laughs> there is no hope. Rule in the midst of your enemies. So there will be enemies. There will be giants. When God told the Israelites to go into the promised land, when they were going there, the Bible said they saw giants. So in every promised land, there is a giant. But they don't fear giant. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Somebody shout hallelujah. Rule! But well, now look at what is the problem. Look at, look at uh, Hebrews 10, verse 12 to 14. Rule in the midst of your name. He you said that your strength, your power, your dominion will go up from Zion. In other words, everywhere I enter, I'm supposed to have dominion there. Anywhere I enter, I'm supposed to be ruling there comfortably for Christ. I'm supposed to spread the government of God everywhere I go because that government is inside of me. The headquarter is in heaven. And there is a territory called heaven. But that heaven now is inside of me. Oh my God. Are you there, Hebrews? Yes. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, verse 12 to 14. Can you read it for me? Hebrews 10, 12 to 14. Hebrews, Hebrews 10 from Amplified Vision says, Whereas Christ, having offered the one sacrifice, the all sufficient sacrifice of himself for sins for all time, Set down, signifying the completion of atonement for sin, at the right hand of God, the position of honor, 
waiting from that time onward until <laughs> his enemies are made the footstool for him. I want you to read that place again. Waiting from he's not sitting there. Remember, remember, uh, remember what is it called? Uh, Psalm 110. He said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies my footstool. Then he said, He told us how that enemy will make his footstool. He said, The church is the one that's supposed to make, make that thing. That's why he said, Your power will go out from Zion and go and rule. So that Jesus has finished what he's supposed to do by coming to die. Now he is sitting at the right hand of God. And what is he doing? He's waiting for the church. Read it again. Waiting from that time on. From that time, 2,000 years ago, he's been waiting for you and you've been waiting for him. Since you were born, you have been waiting for him. He's been waiting for you. He has been waiting for you. you I, oh, he's been waiting from since that time for what has happened. Until his enemies have made the footstool for his feet. Did you see that? He's been waiting until you will take your position and you are saying you are waiting for the Lord. From that time, he has been sitting down. So part of that uh, Psalm 110 has been fulfilled. He has died. He has ascended to heaven. He's not sitting at the right. Now he's waiting for his enemies to be made his first tool. And who is he waiting on? He's waiting for the church. Now did you see the reason why he said in Matthew 24 verse 14, until this gospel of the kingdom is preaching all nations. He said, I'm not coming back. He will only come back when you have subdued his enemies. Oh my God, you are looking at me as if I'm coming from America. I'm not an American. I'm a Nigerian where I've been living in South Africa for 24 years. Since that time, he has been waiting for you to do what you're supposed to do. He has been waiting for you to do what you're supposed to do. He has been waiting for you to do what you're supposed to do. And yet we are still waiting for him. He has given you what you need. The kingdom is inside of you. Behold, I give unto you power. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost shall come. Don't move anywhere until you endure with power. He has given you what you need to rule, but you are still sitting down on your dynamite. You are still sitting down with all the whole greatness that is in you. God said, I can do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or imagine according to the power that is working in you. The power in you is the power that created the heavens and the earth and you are still waiting for somebody to come and pray for you. Since that time he has been sitting waiting for us to put his enemies under his feet. He's been waiting. He's been waiting and we are just consumed about myself, my food, my family, my... Oh my God. He has been waiting. He has been waiting for you, sleep. He has been waiting for you, Nivesh. He has been waiting for you, Anna. He has been waiting for you. All of you, he has been waiting for you, Gertrude. Maria. He's been waiting for all of you. And you are crying every day. You don't even know who you carry. You don't even know who you are. He's been waiting. He's been waiting for you to do your own. He has done his own. He's been waiting. For how long will he wait any longer? Imagine that God trusts me for me to go and recover his property for him. I am not excited. Oh my God. Even some of you in your office, when your boss gives you some task, you are so excited. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If the president will call you today, you will, you will even faint when you see Prabhupada from you faint. For God is calling you every day. He's speaking to your heart every day. He's appearing to you in the dream. He's giving you vision. The pastor is preaching to you. The more we preach, the more you take something and close your ears. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear. Leave me alone. I just need my... It's only me. It's me. And, and it's, I'm the only thing that exists in this world. Only me. If I can only get money to take my children to school. That's all. You're going to pay dearly. You're going to pay dearly for the investment. Remember? The Bible said he gave the talent to three people. He gave this one. 
Ten, eh? Yes. Get this one, five. No, get this one, five. Get this one, two. Get this one, one. And he said, go and do business until I return. This one uses five and get more five. This one uses two and get more two. The other one went and buried it. Do you know what you are doing? When you are not doing what you, you are buried your destiny. Look at what you said to that one. When that is said, take him to hell so that he can suffer death. He has given every one of us so something we must use to dominate for him. You can never say you don't have for the kingdom is in you. The power is in you. If it's not in you, he would have sent the angels to come and do it. It's not giving, this task is not given to angels. It's given to you. Your, the angels is actually supposed to work for you as you are doing this. That's why even what they are doing there in their company, they are seeing angel every time. The angel that has been released to them. If the, the, the other sister sent me a message during the weekend, he said while she was praying, so one of the bosses came, the, the demon came from the first one of the bosses and said, what are you guys doing? I have been in this company from the time this company started. You guys want to chase me. You are weakening me. You guys should stop this thing. He said, why that demon was shouting at her? Two angels came and arrested the angel, that demon and the way. The angel is waiting for you just to stand. And you are afraid. You are afraid of giants. You are afraid that you didn't go to school. No, 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 no. I am a Zulu. I am a Zulu. They don't respect Zulus. Say who? When you become a born again, you are no longer a Zulu. You are from the kingdom of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. The kingdom life is a superior lifestyle. When you give your heart to Jesus, the Bible said in the book of Romans, Hebrews 12, Say you have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So when you are in the kingdom, nothing can shake you. That's why I say nothing shall my enemies hurt you. Nothing. You carry the power to change the world. And your life is a mess. Your life is in shambles. Who will believe that? Who will believe it that you you carry enough power to be a billionaire? But you are still looking for a man we need to eat in the morning. Who would have believed that as you are, you're supposed to be a prophet prophesying to nations? But you are looking for somebody to lay hands on you. Oh my God, to cast that headache. He has been sitting, waiting for you to put his enemies under his feet. And you are busy playing church. <laughs> Busy playing church. They are busy playing church. I belong to stars. Stars will never take you anywhere. No, no, I'm a Roman Catholic. Forget it. Somebody shout hallelujah. What are you doing? The power is in you. Now go back to your company and announce to demons in that place. I say, hey. The kingdom of God is here. You are the kingdom of God. You are the carrier of the kingdom. Go back to your neighborhood and make an announcement. That will say to Joshua. What did he say to Joshua? In the book of Joshua 1 verse 3. He said, wherever the soul of your foot shall tread upon death, I have given to you. He gave them then the boundary. He said, as he said, all the days of your life, no man can be able to stand before you. As I was with Moses, I will also be with you. I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. God is with you. And you don't even know it. But my, my sister told me the other few days ago. The angel came and waved her wing, his wing on her. And she fell down. Wow. Because she saw herself praying in the dream. I want to see the angel. I want to see the angel. I want to see an angel. When she woke up, wide open. The angel appeared and she felt the breeze. He said she was feeling hot or something like that. Feeling hot. He said, then the angel came. She felt it. He said, Pastor, I have an encounter. I had an encounter. Maybe he's handing you up so that you can wake up. You have seen me. He wants to go and dominate for me. Go back to your community and tell the devil, hey, God is here now. 
For whoever has seen me has seen the Lord, said Jesus Christ. You are the Lord. You are not God. That's why he said, I have said, you are God. You are God's now on earth. And the Father in heaven is our Father. Listen, until you change the way you've been doing things, you will never change the result you have been getting. Never. If you think coming here, your pastor is a magician, pray. listen, that's why I want to give priority to teaching. Because the only thing you have is teaching. You know, any miracle you got today is finished. It doesn't, it doesn't, but what you know, nobody can take it away from you. Yes, Amen. What you know, nobody can take it away from you. A miracle, prophecy. <laughs> the Bible says prophecy it will pass away. But the word of God is a sure word of prophecy. Any word you see in this Bible, you claim it. It must happen. The Bible says, He said, heaven and earth will pass away. But that word will happen. You must begin to locate where God wants you to rule for Him. If you have not located any place, at your workplace, if you want to know more about what we are talking, come to us. We want to teach you. In fact, I want to start it. How to locate your promised land and to rule there. That's what I'm teaching the people in Stenga from Padwoz. And that's why they came to church every Sunday. The people from Padwoz and they come first. How many of us? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All of us from Padwoz, we are the first to come here. And we are waiting for people from Devon, Queen and Kings. They carry it. <laughs> we can't we wait. We drove on the way. How many? How many kilometers? We can't here. Seven thirty. We are here already for seven.